Hey guys, what's happening? So, I've actually seen these for a while. And, uh, you know, in my new printer build, I was trying to simplify the wiring a little bit. And uh, these things definitely look pretty cool. Um, it's the uh, Victory Tech EB36 uh, version 1.2. Let me open this up. Let's open up real fast. So, I actually haven't installed these yet. Like I said, I've seen them for about a year. And they're actually like a CAN bus board. So from everything I've read online, it looks like you can either do CAN bus or USB. So you basically have four pins, you have power and CAN bus. So you can do like a single button wires back to your main board here. This is an s uh, 2 right there. So you could run a, a have like a CAN bus adapter that came off the board, and uh, yeah, you could run CAN and power, or you can actually run the USB straight into the actual uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, like I think this is geared more towards Clipper, because I don't know if you could do multiple MCUs in uh, Marlin. I mean, I've done many, many Marlin installations, but I don't know if it supports multiple MCUs, whereas Clipper can support multiple MCUs. So. If you're not familiar with these things, they basically have a Trinamic 2209 driver on them, and they actually control the actual, like, the stepper motor, the extruder motor. So that would go here, like that. And you basically control the motor, and it's basically like a 3D printer board. It's just like an additional 3D printer board. That's exactly what this thing is. You know, you have your own processor, CP, right here, and it's the exact same thing with the pinouts. You know, you're going to be controlling the fans, the RGB lighting, uh, you know, the extruder t heater, you know, the thermistor, uh, end stop too. So, um, let me show you the printer I'm going to put this on. All right, so if you're new to my channel, this is the printer I'm designing. It's called the Orgabot. So, I haven't actually released the, I've already designed a whole extruder system for it. Um, based on that XGX or HGX light that you just saw. Um, so this should go back here. I'm mount it back here somewhere. It's going to fish up, but I think I'm going to go, I'm not going to go CAN bus because I don't want to get like an additional CAN bus board. I'm just going to go USB straight into the Raspberry Pi 4 right there. Yeah, another cool th feature about this little PCB is that the hole spacing is exactly like that of the, uh, the SNEMA 14, the round SNEMA 14. So I don't, I think they've, there's some adapters online. I guess you can do some standoffs or something like that, maybe. I mean, I do actually have lots of standoffs, but uh, they call it like an umbilical, you know, to support like wire support. So either I'm going to design one. I probably just end up designing one. That way it matches my whole printer. Because the goal of my printer was to design everything from, from scratch and not copy anybody's designs. But yeah, here's the extruder it's going to be on. So I'm not going to do a full test. I'm just going to see if I can get this to go with my... Um, hook it up to my Raspberry Pi 4, get some... Um, you know, do some motor control maybe, uh, control some fans, see if I can get it going. Um, like I said, it's, it's like one of those things, because now that you have two MCUs now, whenever you upgrade Clipper, you're going to have to upgrade both your chips, both your processors. Um, I'm actually running SKR Pico on that and the other, other machine. So this is just, I'm just giving this as a representation of what it would actually be like. But uh, yeah, so you're going to have two CPUs to flash, which will take longer time, you know. It's... Um, I kind of wish they would have used the uh, Raspberry Pi CPU, you know, for this. But, um, I mean, this is actually a better CPU, and it's faster than the actual, uh, the the Raspberry Pi CPU, ARM CPU. Here's the extruder that's going to go on. But, like I said, I've designed a whole extruder system based on this right here. You'll see in the upcoming videos. Um, all right, so let me get this going. I guess I'm going to just hook this up to the... My USB port, compile it. Because there's lots of videos on how to compile it. You know, hit the reset, program it. Yeah, but I'm first going to compile a piece of firmware based on this. But I think you can even download the firmware from um, from their website, Big Tree Tech's website. If you didn't want to have to compile the firmware, you could just copy the bin file over. That's cool. I just opened this bag up. Um, they came out with all the pins. You'll need some crimpers, obviously, to do this. Um, Came with two different connectors here, power connectors, and um, what are these called, like uh, JST connectors. 
They even came with, uh, what's it called? The uh, standoffs. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so this might be a little bit difficult to figure out. Uh, yeah, I've actually fixed hundreds of 3D printers. I mean, they're all different, but the thing is the documentation is really spotty on this. So this is actually a version 1.2 board, and the jumpers are in different locations. So, and it's not, I think, and this is the USB power, so I can power from here, but that then 1.2, they, they changed the way you flash this thing, the DF, going to DFU mode, uh, bootloader mode, to be able to flash it. All right, so on the 1.2 board, that is the actual USB powered, whereas I think in the 1.1 and 1 version 1 board, the USB power is up here, or somewhere, it's in a different spot. Plus, they actually removed the jumper for to go into bootloader mode, so you just basically hold these two buttons down to go into bootloader mode, but I'll show you that once I get to it. Like I was saying earlier, there's two ways you can control this thing, either via CAN bus, uh, through these pins right here, the way you're going to communicate from Raspberry Pi to this board here. So CAN bus would be on this connector, you have power in CAN bus. So if you run around CAN bus, then you, you need to have a, a board that actually has some sort of out, you are, you are out. And then um, you'd basically take that and put it into like a CAN bus adapter. Uh, so I'm going to try to get to go with USB. Um, just that seems simpler. Um, so it's just really just like the same thing as like a board. I don't have to go through and mess with CAN bus settings. All right, Pi is booting up. Got a power on the board. So I'm not in bootloader yet, mode yet. I'm going to go through and just uh, try to figure out the firmware part of it. I mean, it seems like it's pretty similar to like any other sort of like board on, on Clever. You have to go through, make the menu config and uh, build the firmware. All right, so the, what's interesting is they all sort of like, they all compile and flash, well, they all compile the same, the way you build the firmware, but the way you flash them is different, and it depends on the actual CPU on, on, the, on the motherboard. All right, let me show you how compile the firmware here real fast. Go to CD Clipper, the Clipper folder, like menu config, and you wanna make sure you have this CPU checked right here. And pretty much all the defaults, you just got to change the CPU. I hit Q. Actually, I'm going to shift Q. Now, since I already saved it, enough to make a change. All right, Q. That should be able to make it clean. So I already made my. Uh, and that's going to create the uh, clipper.bin file. So it's a little bit different than the SKR Pico. All right, so now gonna now that it's done compiling, I just gotta figure out how to flash it over there. I know all these boards are different, so it's like a key combination on this newer 1.2 board. So I have to get it into uh, bootloader mode. All right, so I actually found a page on how to flash this newer version of the 1.2. Um, so let's make sure it's on the bus. You can see it. You know that it's in the right mode. Um, if you don't see this DFU mode, then you have to go back and redo the sequence. You have to keep on redoing it until you see it's DFU mode. So I should be able to it shows on the bus. Copy this command down here. Move this over so you can see it. This right here, and then copy and paste what's unique to mine right here. So I'm actually going to do this on a text document. That way, I don't mess it up. Okay. Notepad. Go back here, paste it, and I gotta replace that with mine. Where's my command prompt here? Device address here. Okay, can boot, can boot now. I might have to change this. That's for CAN boot. Um, but I'm actually flash. But this, this is actually a CAN booting um, for CAN. So I need to change mine to the Clipper firmware. Where mine is, my Clipper firmware is. All right, so in this document, this is for a CAN bus right here. Uh, but obviously the firmware is different because I want to go USB. So this was actually what they had on here. And uh, I switched over to the uh, path over here. So the clipper.bin clipper file that just compiled. 
let's do a copy and paste this in here. All right. All right, there it is, it's flashing. All right, so here is the EB636 uh, little thing I designed, the umbilical and cover here. Yeah, I didn't really want to have open PCB. Um, I'd like to you know, make it look a little bit cleaner, I guess. Obviously, some grates here to allow air to come through. Um, all right, let's go on to my test bench and we'll take a look at it. All right, now that I got this thing working, uh, both simultaneously connected to the Pico and the EBV board, uh, I'm going to start messing with the firmware. All right, so I decided to extend my USB. I got a longer USB cable. So what I need to do is get this thing into bootloader mode. So you'll see these two little reset buttons here. Like I said, it's different for the 1.2 board. So I'm going to try this without shorting the pins out, but hit them both simultaneously. Probably can't see that in the camera. And then release it. And that should make it go into bootloader mode. So now I should have my old tool head from the Sobel printer. That way I can do like a, uh, you know, thermistor test, heat test, fan test. I can even drive the motor. Even though I, I do have the current turned down for a Nemo 14. Let's turn this on and see what happens. All right, getting power. Most likely I have to restart Clipper. But from here on out, I'm going to just do go for my uh, computer out here. Um, let's try that again. Firmware restart. Give it a second here. Let's, oh, forgot to turn power on. <laughs> Jeez. All right, firmware restart. Okay, let's go back on the fan now. This should be a layer cooling fan. All right, now the. All right, the lower fan's on, and we'll do, to move the extruder, I'll have to heat it up, so I'm going to bring this up to 215, or I'll just do 210, and, okay, hot end cooling fan came on, and this, is, this is actually a tiny connector, I wish I would have got one bigger with the connector, um, yeah, one of the things I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but actually this thing actually has a built-on accelerometer, which is kind of cool. You know, really, like, time will tell if this thing's going to be, I mean, reliable or not, you know? Um, plus, I think the CAN bus, like, if you don't have a motherboard that actually has CAN built in, like the, the SK or Octopus, some of their higher-end motherboards actually have the CAN, like the uh, SKR or an Octopus Pro Easy actually has the CAN bus connected right on the board. So you don't need the adapter board. But I feel like if you have to go out and buy the adapter board, it's not really worth it. You know? Because you're, I mean, you, you have basically have to hook your Raspberry Pi up to an adapter board, which then goes over the wire. So, yeah, I mean, CAN is cool, but I, I'm feeling like it's going to be more difficult to troubleshoot if you have a problem. Whereas this way... I can quickly see if the MCU is, you know, on or off. Yeah, I'm some, pulling some wandage. I can smell it heating up the... You can see it kind of dribbling here, too. Um, okay, so I'm going to let this heat up, and we'll do a uh, separate test. And then the only thing I haven't tested with is Pro, but I'm not going to do that until the, the, my printer's done. This really was just a test to see if it works. I mean, I probably have, like... I mean, like three to four hours in this, probably, maybe? I'm not sure. Like, I almost messed the firmware with the bootletter thing. I'm glad I was able to recover that. Um, but what I was saying earlier in the video is that, you know, if you screw up your, your STM microprocessor, you can actually reflash a bootletter on it. And uh, But you need a thing that's uh, called an ST-Link. I have one around somewhere in one of these boxes. I mean, I've had to recover a lot of these motherboards. Um, but, you know, they, people will flash them and they will, they'll screw them up, so... Um, all I have to do is hook up the ST-Link and reflash the, the factory firmware back onto it. That should be in a range. Um, let's do an extrude. There it goes. And obviously I don't know if the steps are correct, but... Alright, so... I can verify all functioning is working correctly. And one of those things, this thing does support this newer higher-end thermistor. I think it's called like a Max 3 
one eight six five or something like that. Um, I've never actually played with one of those. It's like a multi wire thermistor instead of the two wire thermistor. Um, yeah, I mean the probe. I'm running like a like a micro touch here, the probe button. But so what did I pay for this thing? I'll put links down below. Um, I think it'd be like 36, 35 for it. And like I said, it's not worth, if I had to put another $20 in this for like a can adapter, I'd rather take that money and put it to like an octopus. Like buy a motherboard with the actual can built into it, than have to buy and wire in some external adapter with extra wires and make everything more complicated than it needs to be. Especially like I said, for troubleshooting purposes, man, if you're having to troubleshoot a can problem, Especially if you have it in cam bridge mode, if you had it behind the Raspberry Pi, like on the UART pins, I mean not the Raspberry Pi, but the, like I said, the SKR Pico board, you can connect on the US the UART pins where you connect the Raspberry Pi normally. Um, yeah, troubleshooting that would be a nightmare. Um, if this way, I mean, I, I, if, I'm, if I'm not communicating with the MCU, then I know it's, it's something wrong with the USB cable or some kind of connection problem. So... But yeah, maybe once I upgrade to a, a better board, then I'll uh, screw around with the can. But cool. All right, so here is the EB36 mounted to my extruder system. And then actually I actually have the, uh, here's the fan cover. But, uh, well, just, uh, I mean, so you don't see the open PCB. And really, it doesn't do that much, but it's uh, open air. So to allow air to get to these things right here. So in some of the videos I saw um, people actually adding the heat sink. Um, to the CPU, even though I had a separate heat sink on the CPU, the, I mean, the videos I've seen so far is the heat sink is on the actual CPU, the ARM processor, whereas the sink, heat sink should be on the driver. <laughs> because that's gonna, what's going to get hot, you know, the constant, you know, going around with the, uh, uh, driving the, the extruder motor. So, all right, guys, put a link down below on my Thingiverse page if you want this thing. Um, yeah, I mean, a much cleaner design. You know, basically just, I'm going to basically have a, uh, you know, PFT, PTFE tube and the just 12, 24 volt and the USB. I got a 90 degree USB cable, which will then feed back into here. So, all right, guys. Cool thing, you know, with the accelerometer. So, all right, awesome.